Hi, my name is Dr. John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio, and I want to spend a few minutes talking about how patients can choose between a gastric bypass and a sleeve. Once a person reaches a stage where they feel ready for bariatric surgery, once they've tried diet and exercise and found that those interventions aren't potent enough to get the obesity problem under control, the next common step is to try to choose which surgery a person is going to have. The most common choices in the United States right now, both very good choices, are gastric bypass and gastric sleeve. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about how to choose between these operations. Before I get into medical facts and medical comparison between the gastric bypass and the sleeve, I want to emphasize that this needs to be a conversation between the patient and their surgeon. Patients who research this process before going into the office usually come in with a sense of attraction or a vibe with one of the operations, and my experience is that's usually a pretty valid factor to take into consideration. The key thing here is that the patient is going to put this operation to work in their own body, the surgery will be their tool, for many years to come. And so it's absolutely important that the surgery seem like a good fit for them at the end of the conversation choosing the surgical procedure. In my own practice, I like to begin the discussion about this decision by letting people know that the gastric bypass and the gastric sleeve are both good operations. And for most people, what we have is a choice between two good options, not really a right or a wrong. And we're going to talk in a moment about some of the medical differences between the operations, but I like to begin by talking about many, many things that are the same between the operations. First of all, both operations are done laparoscopically. That means several little incisions, minimally invasive with the TV camera. People are typically in the hospital for one night, about 80% of the time, sometimes two nights. And people typically are ready to go back to work at 10 days or two weeks after surgery. What's also the same between the operations is that uh, we're going to recommend for people to take some extra vitamins and iron daily for life. In our own practice, that recommendation is the same for both operations. And in both operations, food absorption is actually normal. Now, I want to do a little bit of myth busting here because the reputation has been that the gastric bypass has reduced absorption and the sleeve has normal absorption. In fact, research is showing us that both of these have normal food absorption in comparison to a different operation, the duodenal switch, which has significantly abnormal absorption by design. I'm not going to say anything else about the duodenal switch in this video because that's not our subject, but just so that we know that this is the operation that leads to malabsorption, and both of these operations have normal absorption of nutrients and normal nutrition levels for years and years to come. Now, in discussing the mechanisms of action of these two operations, it's important to remember, as I've discussed in another video, that what we're really dealing with here is a metabolic condition, this obesity disease. Uh, recall just briefly that everybody has a fat storage control system. It's a, it's a complex, intricate, powerful control system that, for our patients with obesity, gets significantly out of balance. And so it can be said that our patients who have obesity um, have a situation where their body wants them to store all this excess fat, even if we know logically and intellectually that that fat is not healthy. And so if you're going to have therapy that lasts and therapy that works for many years, that therapy needs to get to the core of that imbalance. It needs to actually go in and readjust the fat storage system or in a sense, change the appetite. And this is different than changing the amount of food that a person can hold, okay? So notice, first of all, with the sleeve operation, yes, there is a smaller stomach, and so yes, there is less food capacity, but that's actually the less important factor in how the sleeve works. The more important factor is that we're removing this part of the stomach, and we're not just removing food capacity here, we're actually removing part of the hunger mechanism. Neat, so how does that work? Well, it turns out there's some hunger hormones in this part of the stomach, ghrelin, for example, that are made only here in the body, nowhere else in the body. And so when we remove this large section of stomach, we're actually changing the metabolism. And what's very interesting is that this hormone change turns out to be only part of the story. The sleeve and also the gastric bypass have been found to lead to positive changes in the profile of bacteria that live in the colon. Even though we're not operating on the colon, we change the bacterial content and that does have an impact on weight. Also, these operations change the composition of bile, which is one of the digestive juices, change that bile from an abnormal, unhealthy, fatty pattern to a more healthy, lean, that is to say, a lower weight pattern. So again, the metabolism is the key. The surgery is not only changing how much food a person can hold, but more importantly, changing how much food a person wants. So that now, with the help of the operations, 
the person is working with their body for lower weight instead of working against their body, which is fighting to maintain weight. So now thinking about how the gastric bypass works. So the gastric bypass, yes, it does have a small stomach pouch that reduces food capacity. But notice that it's going to reorganize how the food flows straight down into the intestine, where digestive juices are going to come here. They mix through this connection, and there's normal absorption downstream. And the important piece for metabolism is that food is no longer going to follow this normal pathway into this section, which is called the duodenum. And the reason that seems to be important is because the duodenum has a very complex set of neurohormonal reflex pathways that actually seem to become part of the problem when people have this disease of obesity. And so bypassing that section, remember it's called a gastric bypass, bypassing that section leads to near immediate improvements in um, hunger levels and fat storage and insulin sensitivity. I should note here that the gastric bypass is especially beneficial for people who have diabetes. Now people who are comparing these two operations, of course they want to know what are the outcomes, what are the risks, and there are just some little differences between these operations in terms of outcomes. Um, the gastric bypass, which is this one, the gastric bypass does have a slight statistical advantage in terms of weight loss versus the sleeve. And the gastric bypass somehow seems to be a little bit more effective for female patients. Now, nothing wrong with the weight loss in the sleeve. People tend to lose a lot of weight and get down to a very healthy level with both operations. But if we talk about little differences, they favor the gastric bypass there. Um, the gastric bypass is actually a bit more effective for diabetes and reflux disease. The sleeve is useful when a patient has had extensive previous surgery in the middle of their abdomen. So if we can expect scar tissue involving the intestine here, um, that might be difficult to get it mobilized for the gastric bypass. The sleeve can be beneficial because we just have to work in this area to accomplish the surgery that we need to do. The other couple of conditions where the sleeve might be a better choice is if a person has an ulcer history or if they are definitely going to need aspirin-related medicines because aspirin family medicines can cause ulcers with the gastric bypass, but the sleeve is fairly resistant to that type of ulcer scenario. Also, if a person has a smoking history, that's very likely to cause ulcers, and smoking's bad, but smoking will likely not cause ulcers for a sleeve patient. So those are some of the ways, medically, that we might make a choice between these operations. One other difference between expected outcomes is that the gastric bypass has a special feature called dumping syndrome. And dumping syndrome, which does not show up with the sleeve, dumping syndrome happens if a person with a gastric bypass has intake of real sugar. I'm talking about M&Ms or ice cream or things like that. And in the setting of a gastric bypass, sugar should cause dumping syndrome, which is cramping, nausea, and usually diarrhea for about 45 minutes to an hour. Feels really bad. But I want to reassure you that people who have a gastric bypass actually rarely have dumping syndrome. Once they follow the correct diet, proteins and green vegetables, dumping rarely happens. It turns out that the risk comparison of these operations is actually very similar. The sleeve, it looks a little bit simpler in the diagram, so there's often kind of a, a knee-jerk or an intuition that the sleeve has less risk, but when we look at the statistics, they're actually statistically the same. And the big complications that we worry about are leakage or bleeding. Happily, both of those complications are very, very rare in our practice for sleeves and gastric bypasses, um, and again, statistically just the same. I will say that the gastric bypass has a slightly higher percentage of problems that I call glitches in the first couple of weeks after surgery. And I use that word glitch to mean that, yes, it's a medical problem, it's an issue that needs treatment, maybe some IV fluids, maybe a visit back to the ER for some hydration, uh, but it's not a major medical problem that's going to lead to lasting problems. So those glitchy type of problems run one, two, maybe 3% with the sleeve, two, three, maybe 4% with the gastric bypass. So in summary, both the gastric bypass and the sleeve are very good, reliable operations. And patients that choose either one of these operations, for the most part, are going to achieve substantial health benefits that last for many decades. Thank you.